What's up, everybody? Another episode here of Palangi Studio of Rock, only on Radio Wigwam. How you guys doing out there tuning in from the internet land? You will see this video later on our social media as well. Every Tuesday night, we do a show with playlists, and sometimes we get to interview some very cool people. Speaking of cool people, we have Wes here from Puddle of Mud somewhere. How's it going? Doing well, man. Are you in a hotel right now? Uh, I am. I'm always in hotels. Always. My- <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a set base that you call home somewhere? Kansas City, Missouri, Kansas. Okay. I was going to say, let's go back all the way to 1991. That's where you guys formed. Uh, yes, sir. That's exactly. How did you? Uh, how did you come up with the name Puddle of Mud? Because it is very interesting and very rad. Puddle of Mud was a big old flood in '93 in Kansas City, and we had a little rehearsal, so a little rehearsal place there, right by the levee, and uh, it was about eight feet deep. Yep wrecked the entire basin and uh yeah we had to pull through uh like a big i just did it the other night <laughs> <It was laughs> practice What's... practice all too yeah it was it was wild yeah it's a big old shitty puddle of mud everywhere but you know it got worse and worse and worse so fortunately we we're on the second floor then you're like that would make a great band name yeah Basically, we were, yeah, we were writing and creating shit in a big, huge fucking puddle of mud, man. It was yeah. insane. Isn't it weird sometimes, like, band names and stuff, they're so simple, and they just come to these these bands, a lot of stories and stuff, and you're like, that that's how you made up the name? Like, I think everyone thinks, like, it's a, you sit there for a year thinking, what's, what is this, you know, band name? What are we going to call it? Yeah, puddle of mud, that's it. Bye. Simple as that. What did you what did you do before that? Did you have any high school bands or did you play like when you were younger in like middle school and Yeah, I had um High Impact was my first band. Okay. Sorry. In some water. All right. <laughs> we all need that. Yeah, hydration. Um yeah, high impact and then there was a uh, <coughs> Um, good question. And I like took these like these like huge um, styrofoam panels, which were like probably about twelve feet by twelve feet. And my dad used to use these Geiger counters, um, which is basically a, a, a router, you know, in the very beginning of routing. Yeah. Um, right. So I took a skill saw and I just put good question and I wrote you know. I sawed out the G and the O's and, and the whole entire thing, and I put a question mark there. And we rocked a we rocked a set at a uh, freaking at a, an apartment complex community building <laughs> a legal party at yeah, like and, a black party. Yeah, it was actually like an apartment complex party. You know, I don't know if you know, but like, there's always these like. Um, I don't know where they do their business at or whatever. Um, I kind of live in the country, so I'm not used to as many of those, probably. It wasn't the country, but it was like a community building. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. We, 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 you know, fortunately it was styrofoam. So I was like, yeah, okay, we just put this here. There's a video of it, but yeah. So that was a good question for a minute. And um, yeah, it's, you know, it was basically a kegger and we all had a good time. Yeah. And we all got kicked out. <laughs> That's what happens, either noise or something, right? Yeah, there weren't really any neighbors, but yeah, we got kicked out anyway. Yeah. So you went uh you went on from there. Did you do you have any formal training? Like did you take it in school? Did you take music or take lessons from a teacher starting? Uh, yeah. Or Leonard. Uh, from um, that, that would be yeah. From junior high school, I played the tuba. Oh, really? I showed up late for class accidentally, and um, yeah. So 
I was the last one there. So he's like, all right, man, you know, here's the tuba. You're going to have to play the tuba, dude, you know, at your I was like, little squeaker little dude, like, well, like I did. Yeah. I was like a hundred pounds and yeah. I had this on, you know, but he said, Hey, you'd be a really good kisser. There you go. Or singer. I was going to say, that takes a lot of lung power. Maybe that's where it started. Yeah, it, it, it's probably helped. <laughs> do you have any vocal warm ups that you do or like pre ritual stuff? Like you always, I don't know, so there's a variety of things I've heard through the years. Yeah, you can do um, basically. <clears throat> I just woke up. Um, <laughs> I just, it, um, yeah, it's all vowel sounds. It's just like, it's just kind of like, you know, you just go like, Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on this farm he had some pigs, E-I-E-I-O. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. I never thought about that. You could do that in scale stages and, and keep going high if you want to. Well, there's all the vowel sounds. Most women actually, um, when they haven't seen each other for a long time or every day for that matter, even if they haven't seen each other for a long time, they go like, Oh my God. <laughs> like, yeah, they, they words just, elongate yeah like, yeah <laughs> do you do you want to where you have to drink a lot of water or tea or i've seen a humidifier on stage with you does that help yeah that's a good thing yeah because a lot of places i don't think people know is when you're backstage a lot of places it's dry sometimes and you're like dude I, no matter how much water you drink you're just your whole body's getting dried out or it's wicked hot that day you know yeah Dehydration sucks. Yeah. So then, uh, I don't know. That leads to not singing as much. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Don't smoke. Don't drink. Don't do drugs. Don't do shit. Stay healthy and, uh, you know, keep your shit together and uh, hit some meetings, you know, with yeah. your friends. Uh, has, your, has your diet changed over the years from when you started to now? Just because it's like, I, I can't eat this stuff and like do a whole tour at once, you know? Um, you got to get your road legs back on. That's all I can say, you know? Yeah. It's like, once you're back jamming on the road, it's like, you know, uh, you know, any, I, don't know man, I don't even know what I'm talking about, but... <laughs> Yeah, you got to get into it again. You got to get in the swing of things. Yeah, I just like, I don't have any like, you know, like, you know, I'm I'm good, strong little skater dude. You know, that's what I do. You know, I, I'm a skater. I'm a blader. I'm a boarder. Uh, you know, I'm a rider, you know, yeah. and forever. And um, so just stay that way. And, you know, if you lose path on that deal, um, you're, you're fucked. Yeah. Don't just swing from shit and um, let little sheep dogs run out and get like you know sheep for you. Like go run out there yourself and uh, get the sheep. <laughs> Round motherfuckers up and come back. Did you? Uh, it's funny you mentioned skating. Were you guys on Tony Hawk Pro Skater? One of those games. If I was, I hope I got paid. Okay, because I was going to say, you guys, your music would fit perfect because I was playing the re-release of it and I was like, it's all that style. Love it. Yeah, I'm a skater punk, man, for life. Is that what you, what you originally liked? It was punk music and then or do you like some like uh, you probably didn't like Poison and stuff but maybe like Metallica and that kind of stuff? I loved all of the names of the bands you just said. Everyone? I, I listened to them profusely to this day, and I still love all the motherfuckers. They're amazing, and they changed my life, and uh, made me want to be like, man, I want to try to like kick it like that, you know? Yeah, because I'm a songwriter, man. 
you know, that's my deal. That's what I was going to go into too, is I, I've heard you've written all, all the music, which is not the case a lot of times in some rock bands. Either it's a lot of different, let's say, opinions are, are involved. You know what I mean? And sometimes that, that breaks up bands. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's weird to be a songwriter, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, uh, it's almost creepy because um, you know, everybody wants to jump on the jam, you know? Yeah. Yeah. When you, you guys, it took 10 years for you to, before you hit that, that big record to come clean one. These guys, he's got a gold record too. Hopefully people know that out there. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of records. Yeah. Hey, man. Thumbs up. Oh, I know. I, I was reading too because I mean that was I I was only the nineties. I was really young, so I was like, uh, "All right, I do know what MTV is and and some of the stuff you guys played." And early two thousands when I started listening to you guys, and um, it was I may be wrong, but I hear some some Nirvana. You know, I hear like Third Doors Down and and the Foo Fighters and and Fuel too. You guys are are a little similar voice wise a little bit. Stallion, yeah, uh, Brett. I've been trying to get him on the show for like five years. I'm like, I can't interview this dude. <laughs> Maybe someday. Man. Like, uh, like I don't know. Like uh, for me, it'd be like Metallica. Is there some band somewhere, dead or alive, that maybe throughout your career that you wanted to play that festival and show with them, but you just you you never got to with that artist. Um, you know what? Like, I would have loved to have played to a, and went on tour with Creed. Oh yeah, that guy freaking rocks. I mean, seriously, that guy is amazing. I, I'm, you can all throw him under the bus as long as you want, but I'm gonna always be on his side. And um, mm -hmm. I love, I, I love Creed. I love Scott Stapp. I love you know John Fashante. And uh, yep. Chili peppers, Mark, Mark's they have the whatever. Forget about what I'm saying. But <laughs> so, so Creed and Chili Peppers on the list. That would be bitching. Creed, Chili Peppers, Mud, and Fuel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, hell yeah, that would be sick. You ever do you, do you ever like like Johnny Cash or anybody like that? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been everywhere too, man. Yeah, it's uh that you, you never have you ever seen Johnny Cash? I've a, I've asked this to a lot of people and and they haven't caught him. I have seen him on the television. Yeah. Yeah. We all have. I was curious live, like if you ever saw him in the nineties. I, I wish I would have been able to see him. Yeah. There's it's funny because um I don't know. I call it like grunge style, post grunge style, hard rock. There's a lot of besides like the, the the girls and the party, and there's a lot of like underlying pain. I feel like that a lot of the singers and stuff write either they're getting out their emotions or there's, but it's like underlying. You know, it's not like here it is, and uh, you know, like three. I, I just interviewed uh, Matt from Three Days Grace. And a lot of their stuff has that. You can you can hear it in the vocal too. Some of that, and yours, I hear aggression, <laughs> a lot of aggression. And then the chorus, a lot of the choruses you do, kind of the, the aggression's there, but it kind of opens up, and it and it kind of gets a little. I don't want to say lighter, but um, but hookier, that sort of thing. Yeah. Where a lot of those like. You listen to punk rock and stuff like that. A lot of that stuff is hooky. There's a lot of good hooks in there. Well, you know, um, basically, as um, Tom Petty said, don't bore us. Get to the chorus. Stop. Yeah. And um, I follow the path of a lot of uh, amazing songwriters. And... Uh, I have been listening to them for decades and uh, they're wonderments, man. They are like beautiful. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not, a, and it's, you know, Durst, Fred, man, like he's, he, 
he likes to take people on like roller coaster rides and you know yeah yep yeah taught me that and um which is awesome thank you fred and uh, yeah so yeah you want to like it's kind of like a it's like it's like a roller coaster you know when you're going up that you know that you're like oh shit, oh, shit. Fuck, man. and then you come over to that part of the road it's like whoa whoa Oh, you and know, you start to like, scream and enjoy it more. Where before it's almost like you're, I don't know, it's like a haunted hayride. It's like you don't know when when that guy is going to jump out. Yeah, but it's fun, you know. Yeah, then, yeah. Then, and then then you bring him down and you do a little nice little nice little bridge middle eight, and then all of a sudden it's like here comes the big old fat super cord. <laughs> Blow your mind. You know I know what, what you mean. I know what you mean. People out there that maybe don't know songwriting, there's a lot of different parts in songs. You know, there's intros and choruses and bridges and verse one to, let's say, verse. There's some songs that have like seven verses, which is out of this world. But, awesome. uh, <laughs> okay. What's your, what's your favorite pattern to write? Do you have like a specific pattern? Like, I always love to start with. Intro, you know, like sweet intro, verse, um, prelude to a half uh, chorus. Yeah. And then back down into a uh, second verse, shorter than the first verse, and then do a little prelude into the next full chorus. Go down into a bridge, which is nice and low and cool, and you know all the like kind of hey, you know, and yeah. then build, and then and then you're going back up the thing at the end of the roller coaster, and then you come back down and just blow people's minds. And <laughs> super chorus is what I call it. The super then, chorus, I like that. And then it's the outro. So it's intro, uh, verse, um, chorus, half, and then you do uh, verse two, prelude. So there's that prelude, and then that's like a full chorus, and then you drop it down into the bridge. Okay. And you're really excited, and then you build from the bridge all the way back up to the super chorus. And then you do like, you know, you just blaze it out. And at the end, you just kind of like let it float, and then you put a little piano or something on there. Yeah, and, a little ghostly guitar. Yeah, a lot. There's a lot of that stuff going on. Which I'll, have is cool. to, I'll have to try that maybe someday. Maybe my next song I write, I'll have to try it. That's what cool. Is it? It'll be I V P D V Pre. B two, and then it would, yeah, B, and then, and then it would be, uh, yeah, and then you do the bridge and come back, and then you do, uh, it's called an outro super uh, chorus, and then you just hit the chorus, blaze. Yep. Everybody's dancing, like Fergie, you know, Fergie goes like, Are you people in the end? <laughs> I remember her. It's my favorite favorite part of the Black Eyed Peas song, man. It's like, uh, boom, boom, now. That's like, yeah. I feel like uh, one of my favorite songs, your first record, is uh, Nothing Left to Lose. I feel like that has that roller coaster ride energy. What What's that song uh, about? I mean, besides maybe the obvious. Well, it's down, you know, you're. You know, in in life, you know, as a youngster, you are down and out, and you got, got, got a pot to piss in, and um, and um, basically, you just be like, I just want to do what I'm I'm loving to do, you know, my passion, and you know, I ain't got nothing, I ain't got nothing left to lose, you know, you know, so it's like, it's just basically saying like, I'll do whatever it takes because I don't need, you know, a lot. All I need to, you know, yeah, 
feel feel positive minded and and uh, you know let everybody know that you know I'm down and I'm rolling and you yeah. can't you, know, you can't stop this train from happening. Yeah, you know? that's, that's what I got out of it too. But I was just curious. Sometimes there's like some underlying thing, and I'm like, oh, I never thought of that. You know? Yeah. But has that uh, over the years from being in? I mean, you have your let's call it your indie years before you got to that, you know, debut record. Has the as you as a songwriter has the process ever been, let's say, tough or interrupted by maybe what say the label would want to put out versus what you're like? No, this I'm telling you, this is going to be the you know the single and the song. And is there anything ever been like that happened to you? All of them. All of them. All, all the Puddle of Mud hit songs. Um, according to some unknown people that I will not actually say, but yeah, they didn't believe in Blurry and, you know, they didn't think they control Psycho. Um, she, she fucking hates me. Yep. You know, <laughs> Psycho is a good one too. I've heard that one in a movie. I have, cause I'm a big movie horror guy. I've heard that in a TV show or something. Well, hopefully, uh, you know, I wasn't put in the wrong mailbox of all the addresses that I've had in my life that I didn't even know about. <laughs> I don't remember the movie, but I know it's in something. I know it's in there because I go, that's why I first heard it. And I was like, yeah. But we did the video there. Um, I actually was hanging out with this, this fine lady that worked at, um, she was working at uh, Universal Studios right down the street from where I'm at right now. Um, and um, we were kind of kicking it. And I was like, you know what? I was with my dad, my son. And um, she was like, I was like, you think we, like, we could just bomb the like psycho house, you know? Yes. Um, from the Bates Motel. So that's where the psycho video actually was actually done. And, um, and um, I, I don't know. I guess I like humped my way in or something slightly. <laughs> <laughs> with it, you know, like. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that, you know, um, yeah, this, the psycho thing was, uh, was, was actually done at the universal backlot, um, you know, in, uh, Cali with and, the original, uh, yeah, the original psycho, uh, the house, yeah, the house, tell everything. Yeah. So were were whole, you a big horror movie fan? Um, I really, you know, like I, 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 I love horror movies, but, um, you know, I just get scared too fast and like, I have to turn them off. And I'm like, ah, you know, like, <laughs> because rock musicians love being in horror movies. That's why I bring that up. Cause I'm like, uh, was it the singer power man? 5,000 just made a horror movie. Um, I love horror movies. I've been into making small stuff ever since a kid. So I'm like, uh, Maybe you get killed off by Jason Voorhees someday. Who knows? Sure. Would that be sweet? <laughs> um, it's like an honor. I was, yeah, I was killed by that hockey mask wearing guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but all horror movies aside, that's, I mean, uh, personally, that's where I found a lot of, let's say, you know, your style of, of music and that, and that genre. So I, I thank the horror movie community for, you know, introducing me to a, a lot of stuff. And uh, did you guys have like uh, demo cassettes back in the day before, before you got signed? Did you do those? That's how I got signed. Oh, with a cassette. Okay. Cause I was like, I know CDs were around. Praise Leisha Nunes for making me the two demo tapes uh, and, mailing them to my address in Claycomo, Missouri. And, uh, and you know, they came in the mail and uh, I went to Limp Biscuit. Uh, it was family values, you know, and I had the little, it was just like I was moving out of town. So I just wanted to have stuff uh, like something for me to listen to. So yeah, actually, Leisha Nunes uh, made two cassette tapes of because I was out of money and I didn't have anything like a pot to piss in and um and I had no CDs and I couldn't afford to like make any more copies like it was over and done with wow thank 
thank God for that chick for sending them because we family values, you know, backstage, fake backstage passes and a cassette, you know, tape, you know, yeah. and gave it to our security guard, uh, Richie. Thank you. <laughs> Man, was that, did you feel like that was like your last chance to be like, to, you know, I mean, like you said, you're out of money and, were you kind of at the the bottom of the barrel with with the uh, doing it after nine years and and yeah. like, when was it going to happen? You know, and I was done with it. You know, and yeah. then I saw a asteroid go past the highway, made a wish, woke up in Mobile, Alabama, and uh, holy moly, uh, Fred Durst somehow, you know, says kick it, come to L.A., man. You we're ready to kick it. So man. I just signed it without any attorneys, nothing. I didn't care about any of the money or anything like that. I was like, yeah, I'll just fly with the wave, man. I'll just rock, ride this wave. And uh, it's, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> all the attorneys on them, though, that they, 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 I don't know where they went, but I, I was just like, hey, uh, woo, let's go. Let's oh, rock. Ho hopefully you fix that for your second record. Right. Thank you, buddy G. <laughs> yeah, because nowadays it's uh there's so many things. Yeah, like I said, there's licensing and there's there's the streaming stuff and so let let's say from from the C D standpoint to digitally now, like hardships of the business. How does how does that what do you think about that with you know people it's like there is no more C D stores anymore. Yeah, yeah, that was the um, the the problem with that was is that um, people anybody could go to Best Buy or wherever the heck you go to, and you could buy you know the stacks of just blank CDs. Yeah, load them into you know CD printers, you know, and um, basically it was all about um, bootlegging. You know, it was like mega bootlegging. Like yes. Yeah. Yeah, so so uh, fortunately, that that was a big hit for the not only the musical industry but also the like film industry as well. Um, that was latter maybe a couple of years, but and then now, yeah. So um, yeah, so it's like you can just go buy a huge, you know, whatever as many blank discs as you want and just bootleg them and uh, rip off the artists, you know. I don't. I I I believe that the uh, the powers that be, the super awesome people, um, really cared about musicians, you know, and songwriters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like, you know, we have to, you know, survive because that's this is our this is our you know this is what we do. Yeah, without that physical product, I mean, there's always digital stuff, but. Yeah, it's thieves, you know, but you still now you, you know, it's still, you know, you can still like, um, you know, have like a, you know, a paycheck at the end of the day for your hard work, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so that was a good thing now, but it wasn't so great when it started going like, like, what? Yeah. Yeah. It stopped. How can we make this not, you know, make, these thieves, you know, do the shit, you know, to us, you know, because yeah. we're, just, we're trying to make happiness happen, you know. Do you ever view it though as like, uh, say, somebody burned a thousand CDs? Right. Say, say half those people listen to it. They didn't buy your music, but maybe, maybe their tickets and fans for life at live shows, and then they start to buy your merch, and that's kind of how I view it. Is yeah. Know, it's it's like a little, you know. Yeah, it's a tipping of the scale. Yeah, it's like it's a, yeah. It's not like you, can, you know. The, I'm not sure what the last uh, like diamond record, you know, artist has been in the last. Um, uh, I don't know, maybe twelve, fifteen years. I mean, like who who's gone diamond? I mean. You know, it's like, Maybe Adele. I don't know Taylor Swift. <laughs> I don't know. I'd yeah, I'd love to see if that actually happened. You know. Yeah. But 
I'm gonna go um, with I don't think so. Kind of a, yeah. <laughs> it, it probably didn't go like you know ten, you know twenty million, you know. Yeah. He, I, I guarantee you that for sure. If if we jump to 2019, you wrote a song called Sunshine. That was another one I caught my ear from that record. Um, I usually don't go with the singles. I'm I'm more of like the the other songs kind of guy. Even though I love the singles, it's like it's yeah. it's it's who you are more. It's actually ho- more of who you are. I think that song is awesome, and that song is always going to be for my 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 motherfucking homie Sunny <laughs> Sunny Gambino. What's up, and, Gambinos? Uh, that. You know, you know, hey, you know, I wrote that about him. He, he told me a story where he was in like solitary confinement in like a dungeon, <laughs> a fucking freezer box, you know, and uh, he didn't have, uh, yeah, he couldn't even see sunshine for, you know, I think it was 24 seven. You know, it was really sad to act, you know, but I was like, hmm. wow. Yeah, so that. What a story to write a song about. That song is for Salvatore Gambino. And uh, I love you, buddy. Everything's cool. And uh, yeah, that song was for him. You know, <laughs> That's cool how some songs get. <laughs> forget about it. Yeah, forget about it. You know what I mean? I- I'm Italian too, my-, my last name. My grandfather came over from Italy. So I, I do I don't actually know any Gambinos, but but I am Italian. <laughs> oh, yeah, this, you guys are great. I love you people, man. You guys are awesome. We I eat did. a lot. We eat a lot. And thank God for that, man. Because shoot, man, what would life be without like pasta and like you know fresh <laughs> every ingredient and everything you can get? You know, it's it's all fresh, man. You know? Very true. Did you did you know that uh, pizza? was actually invented in Wichita, Kansas. No. <laughs> I call bullshit on it. But it was on like the uh, Discovery Channel the other day. Really? Well, okay. The food that made America, right? Oh, that- yes, yes, yeah. I love that show. I watch that all the time. I haven't seen that episode about the pizza, though. Uh, yeah, right? Man, I was like in shock. I was sitting there just like in my hotel room like watching this episode and I was like, Pizza could not have really seriously been invented in Wichita, Kansas by uh, mm-hmm. the Pizza Hut people. And then Domino's, you know. It's like, <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, yeah, it's pizza, but it's not like New York style. It's not like what we think of as like maybe Italian sliced pizza. Yeah, they, they were claiming that on this show. And I was like, I was like, that's got to be bullshit, man. Like, seriously? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> and um, shout out to our supporters today. Alyssa Ebersold, concert photography, graphic design. So if you need some touring photos and that kind of stuff. We have Envious Music Magazine for reviews. And then we've got Melissa Harding, vocal coach extraordinaire. And she's an artist as well. Which brings me to, have you ever worked with a vocal coach? Uh, yeah, man. Um, this lady in uh, Clay Como, Missouri, um, she, um, she was about 80 years old. And uh, my, my, uh, my friend Jimmy Allen, songwriter, coach, songwriter guy, and co-inventor of everything, he, uh, I went, he's like, you need to do some vocal lessons. And I was like, okay. So I went down on this right. bass, uh, uh, piano. Like, and the lady's like, she has a, she has like a tape recorder, right? And she's like, you know, playing these notes on just this old shitty ass raggedy looking like piano at the bottom of this apartment complex. And she tapes me and, you know, it was like, so she recorded me trying to, you know, do this. Like, okay, take this cassette. Back to your little practice hall in your basement and put it on a boom box and, you know, listen to it. And it, I totally, like, completely fucking sucked. Like, 
it was, fortunately, there was no one there to hear how bad I sucked. It, that you know. That, yeah. Well, Mel- Melissa says so. Melissa Harding is who's IU. She was in six a.m. for a little while with um, uh, James Michael, who we who we've interviewed too. She calls it vocalizing. You know, it's not necessarily sounding good at first. You have to you know, vocalize. Yeah, yeah, you, you do, and it's uh, you know, it's like it's just like um, rehearsing for anything, or, or you know, building a skill at anything in life. You know, um, you just have to um, I don't know, dedicate. Some, some time to improve, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Practice doesn't make perfect, but you know, it helps, you know? Awesome. Is there any, because I'm a little bit of a gear guy. Um, is there any microphones like when you record or your verses that you play live that you like either have to have, or you just like sounds better on the style of your voice or that sort of thing, or maybe you're endorsed by some. No, I'm going with SM7 in the studio. Oh, really? Uh, okay. I go SM7 every time, all the time. What do you use live? Usually a uh, usually a uh, SM58 or an SM57, um, but usually it's 58s. Okay. I personally like the audio uh, the audio sevens. It's a different company, but. Yeah. Not really. Yeah. So I had used the beta for a lot of years. Um, I like uh, the beta for some reason over the fifty-eight. What was that? The audio beta, like, um, was it? Was the audio part like, and the name of the? Because uh, a producer, um, sound engineer Toby Francis, who was our sound engineer for a long, long time, who does ZZ Top and he does Ariana and Brian, he does everybody. And uh, he he used these certain mics, and I thought maybe that was a beta. I think you're right about that, actually. Yeah, they see even I think some of the kick drum mics are are beta series, and and they may, I mean they make everything nowadays. People rehaul the you know the 52s to I don't know every mic. I like Shore a lot. I mean that's a good company. We get into SE mics too. Um, there's there's a, there's just a lot of it's good to use variety. I don't know if you ever. Like uh, I don't know for backup vocals or like different vocal, let's call it like effects. I don't know if you actually use a different mic for that for that stuff or you use the same mic. Yeah, I mean you know a lot of uh, engineers and producers and stuff will use um, different kinds of mics. Uh, a lot, a lot of the drums. Um, when it comes to vocals, um, it's usually just a you know. SM58. Single mic. To yeah, me, it's... One of the ones that go, like, there's these little skin, little silver ones that go over the drums, mm-hmm. like, in the recording process, if not live. But they're just, like, skinny little... I don't even know what the hell those ones are, but I've seen a bunch of them. Okay. Yeah. Are they small? Really small? Or are they really long? Hang over the drums to get the, you know, the whole... You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Or, yeah. They make small ones too. They're like pencil mics. And then there's ones that are like a lot longer. Yeah. 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 So yeah. the drummers got mics. Like they're, they're the mic technician freaks, man. You know, like yeah. they got whatever it is, man. Call, call it somebody else. <laughs> don't ask me, man. <laughs> That's what I'm into. They're probably ribbon mics, probably long ribbon mics on each side or something. Or who knows? Some of the drums, you know? Yeah, yeah. They use they a lot of times. I don't know, they use condensers. They use everything. But what's this, some weird mic? Uh, um, I've seen somebody use as a kick drum mic, and I'm like, really? Like it was just very odd. You know, you never use it for drums, but they used it for that low kick drum for some reason. But uh, yeah, um, I know what you're talking about. It's like a it's like an uh, egg shape looking. Kind of yeah, a- I, I don't know what it is, but I was like, okay. It's a microphone, man. Yeah, you know? it's a mic. <laughs> as long as it makes sound. I mean, I, you know, it's crazy about all the old days is that, like, hell, they were like, you know, they were, you know, recording into like, you know, like just like a little, like a metal box. Yeah, like, oh, brother, where art thou? If you haven't seen that movie, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you're gonna get a kick out of that with Clooney and the boys. 
And uh, that was a great movie. Um, but yeah, that's that they were like, it's got to sing into a can. You know? <laughs> You should do that for an effect on one song. Get like a Campbell's can, eat it, and then hollow out the bottom of it and sing through it. Yeah, you can actually take cans and then take a rope. And then like, that's what we used to do when we were little kids. Like, we would take the, like, like you know, like a soup can and yeah. then put a rope through it and then, you know, go 30 feet down there and then you can talk into it and it would actually, you could actually hear the person. Should do that and record it someday. Yeah, right. Like it. I'll do it. You know, like I, a, you I, know how there's like little radio casts where they, they take the voice and they get rid of all the low end and it sounds like a uh, distorted radio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like a rat box thing. Like, yeah. That Something will, like that. Yeah, but like I don't know, man. You can you can do you, you can <laughs> you do anything. But, yeah. But like just old school stuff, man. You know. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show here. I seen you. I remember with uh, Breaking Benjamin, you were on tour with. That was a good show. Love them. Forever. What, what's coming up tour wise for you before we go? Um, I'm going to uh, continue to write songs and uh, just um, you know, you know, just try not to overexert my own self because. I'm not a spring chicken anymore. <laughs> it takes a lot to tour. I know it's like people are like, oh, he's still doing it. It's, it's like, you know, everything to get those shows together, just people have no idea. Even down to the stage. I have no idea how they break down that stage so fast. So make sure when he comes out with a new record, you know, I always, if you're a fan of a band, follow them to the very end. That's what I say. You know, if you've been a fan of Metallica since Kill 'Em All, who cares that St. Anger came out? Just get them all. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's some good riffs. St. Anger gets a bad rap, but there's some there's some good riffs and stuff. The radio edit version of Some Kind of Monster is actually really, really good. I really like that song. You know, I heard this uh, track from Rage Against the Machine, man. I keep I play it every day about ten times. <laughs> yeah. It just pumps you up, you know what I mean? All the down on the streets uh, by the uh, by Iggy Pop. Okay, yeah. yeah, it's such a killer song. You gotta play that for everybody like all the time because I like I'll probably listen to it like like when I get off the phone because it really. Gives oh, really? Play. Maybe I'll throw it on my show. <laughs> and seriously, man, down on the streets, Iggy Pop, and uh, what what the hell is the band like the before what? The, the band before Iggy Pop went solo. Oh, um, I don't know a lot about him, to be honest. I'm blank, but anyway, it was... Uh, he was in the Matt, second Crow movie. It's all, that's about what I know. That's cool. So, yeah. Down in the Streets by Rage Against the Machine. Um, if you're having a bad day, anybody out there, just put that on and start jumping around and dancing. And Because De La Roca... Is the angriest and baddest ass motherfucker that I have ever listened to. <laughs> I love you. I love you, dude. I love you, bro. That's amazing. Any uh, last advice? I ask this to a lot of people for, let's say, indie up and coming musicians. Any advice that you give them, maybe, you know, business wise or just, you know, getting off the ground, let's say. <laughs> Well, basically, it boils down to this, ladies and gentlemen. You have to, um, you have to get with it, get with the program, keep God first place. But you have to, you have to actually dedicate actual time in your life, and you have to, you know, rehearse at your with yourself in your room, whatever it is. You you have to take. The time to you know to want to be something like that you know what I'm saying like yeah like a computer you stick a button and, you know pick up a freaking acoustic guitar or some what I'm just what I'm trying to say is you know like you know try to get better you know try to get better you know yeah more more of a let's say rounded as a player 
Yeah, like no or Bill, songwriter. Bill, you know, whatever you do in life, like you know, just hone in on it. If that's your passion, be the best at it that you can be. You know what I'm saying? And just yep. kind of do to to be the the best that you can like actually be it. Whatever the passion is you want, you know. Yeah. Just kind of practice, man. You know, practice, practice, and practice. Learn, 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 and educate yourself. Just get down and get get better and better and better. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That's why I tell all my guitar students. I go, practice, practice, practice. I go, you ain't going to get better without practicing. Right. So, yeah. great words of advice, I would say. Practice doesn't make perfect, but it helps you out. Yes, it helps you. I use the word progress. And that's kind of what you want to do. Mentally progress in a positive direction. And, you know, I believe everybody can sing and can play guitar Let's to a certain point. You know what I mean? We're like, oh, I can't ever do that. Don't say that. You know, even if it's, you know, you can't get past some basic chords, you got to those basic chords. You know what I mean? Yeah, put your fingers on the neck of the guitar and get used to it. And because it's hard to like get the, uh, it's hard when you first start like trying to play songs on guitar or anything. Yeah, you don't have the stretching and stuff like that. Yeah, it gets it gets more familiar and then it's not such a big deal. You know? Yeah. Well, I appreciate you on here, Wes from Puddle of Mud, new record. And hopefully we'll see you out touring here sometime soon. Very, very soon. Yes, sir. 